Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today, we are going to continue our series on how we can beat, potentially, the best teams in the nation. We are going to talk about today, none other but the team being featured in this and the player being featured in this, Purdue. Purdue is an all-around fantastic team. However, I think they do have one strategy in particular that at least gives teams a fighting chance against them. We're going to discuss what that concept is and look at three examples that have been at least partially able to put Purdue on the back foot and give them a chance against them. The three teams we're going to look at are Ohio State that happened recently, Nebraska that happened about middle of the year, and Tennessee that happened in the beginning. We're going to discuss what they all had in common. Let's go. So the first two things that are crucial is one, the person that we're going to talk about most is the man this video is currently featured on, Zach Eadie. Zach Eadie is a dominant force and he is the capstone to everything that I believe Purdue does extremely well. So we need to address that issue first. Second is that Purdue so far through Ken Palm, they've been unbelievably efficient on offense with 127 as their Ken Palm rating, which means they're scoring 1.27 points per possession adjusted for the team they're playing. So that is tremendously efficient. And as these clips demonstrate right here, the main reason they are super, super efficient is they dominate inside the paint and they dominate through the man, Zach Eadie. The first team we jump to is to Purdue versus Ohio State. For Purdue versus Ohio State, we are looking in particular about how they guard Zach Eadie. For this, we're seeing how they A guard the ball screen and then also when just a regular post up happens. So first off, as that play is occurring, you can see they kind of left Zach Eadie and they chose to target the ball. That's fine. Now Zach Eadie's gonna roll here in a second. And how does Ohio State react? Okay, boom, there's the ball screen, Zach Eadie rules. Where is this defender coming from? He's coming from Morton over here. So I, I, in a previous video, I said that Morton shot pretty well from three. I was confused about who I was talking about. Purdue has several good three-point shooters. Morton is not one of them. Shout out to the many comments that called that out. Thank you. Um, and so when Purdue has non-shooters in the game, essentially you got to trust if you're Ohio State or whoever the defense is, just leave them. Put that player on Zach Eady. Make it so Zach Eady doesn't get the ball. Here, we can see as they rotate back, Fletcher Lura throws the ball into Zach Eady. 23 gambles a little bit. Watch immediately what happens by Ohio State. Okay? This is not just one player, not just two players, but all players are focusing inwards and they are aggressively going at Zach Eady, making sure he does not get a clean look at the ball. Being aggressive, saying refs call a foul, otherwise we're going to be super aggressive. Ohio State in this game held Purdue to 110, so 1.1 points per possession, which is still good because Purdue's a really good team. However, this is gives you at least a fighting chance if you're playing against Purdue. Okay? Purdue likes to run this little baseline out of bounds where they essentially seal and look for Zach Eady off the inbounds or look to essentially get it to him one way or the other. When this pass happens, double instantaneously. Ohio State sends help. They sent it off of Braden Smith. Braden Smith is a very, very good shooter. That tells you the priorities that Ohio State had. They said, we are going to help aggressively and we're going to rotate a little bit behind, but our priority has to be, we are going to help. In this situation, you have Morton too, so they could have helped here, but instead they just they just sent the double, probably because it was from the opposite side, but then the rotation happened behind it, but they just trusted themselves to be unbelievably aggressive. Ball stays in bounce. Zach Eadie is going to look to post up again. Ball gets in. Well, how is it? Instantaneously. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five are literally all staring at Zach Eadie. They are not looking at their man whatsoever. They are making sure Zach Eadie does not score against them. So then we jump to Purdue's game against Nebraska. And one key caveat for this game is that Nebraska already kind of plays this style of system in the first place. So they already help on the post regardless of whether it's Zach Eady or anybody else so this kind of benefited them in the first place so first off notice the players for Purdue right now it's all shooters okay so 55 is a good shooter three is a good shooter good shooter good shooter all the way around what is Nebraska doing they don't even care you have two players that are on Zach Eady Fletcher Lawyer is like a 35 40 percent shooter something very very efficient on the year and shoots it with a pretty high volume and Nebraska is saying yeah we're going to take that risk 
Okay, this is a wide open shot for a good shooter. Okay? And the reality is, if you're gonna play this style of defense, you have to be willing and take these kinds of chances. Because Zach Eady is so efficient on the inside, you have to live with the opportunity that Purdue hits. Frankly, it's possible they could hit 15 to 23s on you if you play this style as aggressively as you need to. Here, again, example, Purdue is looking to move the ball to get the ball into Zach Eady again. As this goes over here, let's watch what the defenders do against Zach Eady. Okay, so Mass is doing one, he's pushing the as far as Edie can go out to the top, okay? Making it a little bit further for Zach Edie to shoot if he has to, okay? Second, help is right there, okay? If you can make it so the pass doesn't happen in the first place, that is the ideal opportunity, okay? Ball gets swung around as Nebraska kind of rotates out of it. The ball gets thrown into Zach Edie. The difference is he is not catching it super close, so it at least makes it. If he's going to shoot this, it's a harder shot. Not only that, he's got essentially four arms, maybe three arms, in his way, making it that much more difficult of a shot, which gives you that much more chance on defense. With that strategy, Nebraska held Purdue to a 104, which is, again, much better than what their season average is for Purdue. And the final example is Tennessee. This is a fairly early season game. We can see they're both 4-0 at this point. However, they're both good teams, and that has lasted throughout the season. How are they guarding Zach Eadie? Okay. They switch that screen right there. You can see immediately this defender is putting his full body in Zach Eadie. Zach Eadie is still so strong, he's able to essentially move it. Okay, ball gets into Zach Eadie. One, two, three eyes immediately on him. Aggressive help, leaving good shooters on the perimeter. That is the trade-off. I'm kind of surprised uh, Smith doesn't shoot this right here because he that's, that's a good look. And they relocate and they look to ball, get the ball inside again. On this, Fletcher Lawyer goes in and attacks the middle because that's what they're allowing because they're giving so much emphasis on Zach Eady. And he shoots a floater here. Now he ends up making this floater. This is, again, as a defense, you have to be able to live with some shots. This is a shot you're going to have to live with. And then again, Purdue is going to look to move the ball to get the ball into Zach Eady. How does the defense adjust? Purdue does such a good job of creating opportunities on offense where they get Zach Eady's slight motion and get him sealed. So you have to make this such an emphasis or else it's just never going to find a way. Hey, so here we can see they're still helping on the drive a little bit. However, you always have a player that's tagging Zach Eady because of the threat he is, leaving somebody on the opposite side. You just got to leave a ball goes up, Zach Eady's super tall, super decently athletic for his, super athletic for his size, goes up, gets the rebound. As this happens, what occurs from Tennessee? Okay, there's 15, there's one foul. Frankly, <laughs> connect to get him, that's two fouls. And then finally, this dude over here is grabbing him around the edge. Okay, if he gets the ball down low in a place where he's going to make a shot, I legitimately believe you got a foul in the center of the free throw line. He is too efficient, and you got to make him earn his points to the free throw line, and it gives you a chance to set your breath and collect everything. But he is so efficient down low, I think sending him to the free throw line is a better option in the long run. So legitimately, because Zach Eady is so efficient, because Purdue surrounding him is so good, you have to pick and choose your poison. So I believe the best method to defend Purdue is to essentially double Zach Eady if they have a non-shooter help off of him. If they have all good shooters, you just got to pick and choose your battles, try and close out late, and try and get the rebounds. Again, this is not to say Purdue is bad. They are a very good team. I'd say they are probably my second favorite to have a chance to win the whole thing behind UConn. I do think that Purdue will probably have a lot of success. I am curious how much attention Zach Eady gets round one, round two, and then however far they last. I'm curious how teams play against them. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe. If you want to watch a recap on just Purdue exclusively, I'll post it right here. And have a blessed rest of your day.